expect to see some pretty strong clinch from uh, from Mr. Kandenko here, whereas we may just from the build, we may see a little bit more of a, a long and lengthy striking accuracy approach from McGinley. Yeah, it looks like McGinley's going to want to keep the distance. Set to lock him in right now. Colorado Muay Thai fixture and legend Oscar Martinez has these combatants ready to meet right here in the middle. They touch gloves. And we're seeing a double kick right away from each fighter meeting right there in the center and a high kick from McGinley right off the rip. Definitely want to throw these kicks out there. Keep your distance if you're the longer, lengthier fighter here. Good at keeping the distance. Nice right hand. We saw a nice little four punch combo right there from McGinley. McGinley is starting to throw a lot of hooks. You know, throwing that teep up the middle, keep the distance. Now, Josh, what do you feel about as he's closing the distance, as McGinley closes the distance, at times his hands are a little bit low. A little bit low, a little bit low, but that's, you know, normal. But to a see. nice high kick right nice there from McGinley. Nice high kick, way to sneak that in there. Yeah, you're going to see that with these new guys. Their, their legs are going to, their uh, hands are going to be down low first, but he'll clean that up hopefully. He seems to be a little bit more fluid right now than Kandenko, who looks to be a little tense within his shoulder capsule. Yeah, a little tense. You know, it's hard. It's hard, that guy. The, their builds are very different. You know, Devin's very long, lanky. So Mark's going to want to have to move his head, get in on the inside, and throw some hard hooks to the body, slow Devin down. He's getting a rhythm going. Now, we did see him just try to go to the base, try to attack the body with a punch there, mixing in a little bit of a level change. But it has been a challenge right now for Kandenko to get inside of McGinley's range. Yeah, there we go. Devin with a nice body kick. Devin looks pretty smooth with these kicks here. He's just scoring. Every single time he lands, you could just basically think of it, folks at home, if you're watching, everyone that lands and, and is accurate, think of it as if you're, you have a, a little ticker that you're going when someone walks through the door. That's just boom, boom, boom. He's points, scoring points. every single time. Yeah, nice job by Devin. Now, in those sort of situations, though, Josh, he is kind of chasing. He as is opposed chasing. to cutting the cage off. Yeah, and that's that's something, you know, new guy, uh, he'll, he'll learn there to cut off the cage instead of chasing his opponent. But hey, what a flurry at the end of the round right Great there for, for Devin McGinley. Devin McGinley looked pretty sharp looked right there in that first really round. Really sharp there in his first round, yeah. Mark, he's going to want to have to come out this next round and, you know, put his head down, start moving, getting angles, getting on the inside with Devin here because you can't stay on the outside with a long, lanky guy like that. Certainly. If you're Ali Humjami and Mark Kandenko's corner, what are you telling him right now? I'm saying, hey, man, we got to bite down on our mouthpiece right now. Like, you can't, can't stay on the outside with this guy and play his game. You got to get in there, disrupt his timing, get, put him on your, get your pace. Certainly. Now, Josh also, because he does look to be, he's a very stout build at that 158.6. Yeah. Would you like to see him maybe utilize some of that clinch a little bit more, find a way inside, and maybe use his strength to uh, to drive the action? Yeah, as that opposed would be. to staying so far on the outside, getting picked apart. Yeah, that would be a smart idea on his part. Get in the clinch a little bit. Maybe get this lanky guy a little tired. We'll see how it goes here in the second round. As we start, Devin McGinley looks cool as the other side of the pillow, though. Oh, and he's Fresh. ripping combos right away. That body kick hit hard right there. That was nice. That sounded like cup. <laughs> There's just certain sounds Ooh, out there, folks. Oh, nice and he got a knockdown right there with the head kick. Knockdown. Oscar Martinez looks to be given the standing eight count right here to Mark Kandenko. Kandenko does look go. like he's good to go. Looks good to go. There we go. You know, Devin's throwing these nice head kicks. I'd love to see him set it up a little bit more with his hands. 
probably get a clean knockdown. And you know, the crazy thing is, to Josh, is it does not even look like McGinley's really throwing that hard, but he's throwing with such volume and he's fighting at a pace that I think is hard to keep up with. Oh, very difficult to keep up with if you're not used to it. I think in a couple of these exchanges, though, where, where Kandenko starts to shell up, would you think that if he were to switch from the hook to the uppercut or weave the uppercut, yeah. that would probably work out for, uh, for potentially a finish right here when Kandenko starts to shell up? Yeah, if he would just change up his where his punches are coming from, he would definitely be able to set. Ooh, nice, nice inside kick to a right hook combo from Kandenko right there. Uh, looks like Kandenko's getting a little bit of a rhythm here. There we go, nice inside. Oh, Mark's landing here. Kandenko is landing. But even at that, he's walking backwards, backwards while he's landing a lot of these. Can't be walking backwards. Got to start cutting some angles here. But overall, he's uh, he's shown a lot of heart right here. You know, you can yeah. tell that Kandenko is, you know, he's definitely taken some damage at this point in the fight, but he hasn't wilted away with this being his debut. Just like we said, sometimes you find out a lot about yourself once you wear that first punch, and all the way to the waning seconds of this second round, he's swinging and banging swinging right now. Swinging and banging. You know, he got knocked down, but he jumped right back up, and here we are at the end of the second round, and he's still in this. Absolutely, but Josh, to be fair and to give uh, to give credit where credit's oh, due, yes. you would have to think that right now that it's, uh, it's a 2-0 situation and, and sure. that Mark Kandenko is going to be looking at needing to find a way to finish this fight yeah. in this round. He'll right need here. to finish this fight in the next round if he plans on winning, but honestly, Devin McGinley is doing a great job keeping his distance, keeping the pace up, just outpointing him, you know, throwing some great combos. Right now, if you're either Eric Lalone or Robbie Graff in the corner of Devin McGinley, what sort of advice are you offering going into this third round, especially given what we just mentioned, that you're probably pretty fair, pretty clear to say that you're up on two cards? I, I hope that his coaches, Robbie Graff, and them are give, telling him to just go out and finish this fight. Don't, don't rely on the judges to give you a win. Go out, set up some nice shots. You've been having some clean shots. I'll set up a head kick. Throw a couple of hands in front of it and finish the fight. Because he has been finding that high kick he has a been lot finding tonight. It a lot, yeah. And we are set to go for the third and final round, folks. We are three minutes away from finding out who is the victor of this contest. There we go. It looks like just Mark Kandenko is just having a hard time dealing with the length of Devin McGinley right now. He is, but he's trying to find his entry. So I can at least tip my cap to him that he's trying Ooh, to use nice. his footwork and trying Double to find his way overhand. in and out. But Josh, he does look like he has a sense of urgency about him he right does. now. He knows. He knows he's down on the cards and he has to go out and make something happen. Josh, you're a taller guy, so you may run into this more times than not. Is it difficult for someone to punch up when you have this much of a height advantage? No. No, I think I think punching up a little sometimes helps out. Oh, there's three big oh, hooks right nice, there for Mark Kandenko. Nice but Ooh. Devin McGinley is swinging right back out. Devin he hurt him with that with knee that to the body. Hands. That's a big right hook right there from nice Devin McGinley. Nice to the body from Devin. Oh, this turned out into a scrap. We got ourselves a dogfight right now, ladies and gentlemen, in this third round. Mark's not going away easy. Oh, little wardrobe Brief, malfunction please. right there. Oscar Martinez is right on top of the action, folks. He is one of the best in the business. And there's that high kick right again there, but you have to say the Kandenko's made a little bit of an adjustment because yeah. he seemed to answer oh. the phone on that one. But once again, though, McGinley is throwing with such a volume and he's landing at a pretty high accuracy percentage. Oh, there we go. Mark's coming in. See, now he's turning it up. Now he's... Oh. Accidental knee to the head here. Correct, and because folks typically, yes, in professional Muay Thai fight, that is 100% legal, but being that this is within the amateur ranks, knees to the head are not permitted. But a combo right off of the break right there nice from Devin combo McGinley. from Devin. Strong finish to the fight here. There's 10 seconds left. See if we see any see theatrics at the very end. Finish strong, finish strong. 
Good hey, scrap I'll by these two guys. I'll tell you what right there. You've got to give an absolute tip of the old ball cap right there to both of these fighters right out of the gate for giving the fans in oh, attendance yeah. and the people watching online absolutely everything that you could have that asked for. That was a for. great fight to start off the night. It gets your blood going. That's a good contested fight between these two amateurs here. Great job by both of them. 100%. And there's a, I feel like there's a lot of things that each fighter can take away from this outing to parlay into their next parlay performance. Parlay into the next one, yeah. Devin did a great job keeping the distance, throwing his high kicks, keeping his teeps and everything. And Mark also, even though he was getting outstruck, he stuck in there, he had the heart, and in the later third round, he was picking it up a bit. Certainly, and that's where you, know, you have to wonder how much for somebody like Mark Kondenko, did it take him at least that round and a half to two rounds to really kind of figure out his entry points. Yeah. We've seen this with some other fighters, where whether it's in Muay Thai kickboxing or within mixed martial arts. Sometimes when you're dealing with someone who has, for lack of a better term, abnormal dimensions. An abnormal adv advantage, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and trying to, trying to figure out, okay, well, I'm way out of range to hit him, but he's still in range to touch me. So yeah. trying to figure out where those entry points are, I have to feel like is something that, especially in a debut Muay Thai fight, that took him a little bit to figure out. But again, you have to give the kid credit yeah. because he stuck through it, he got knocked down, he got back up, and he continued to fight hard all the way to the final belt. Yeah, and that's something you can definitely take into your next fight. Definitely, but you have to give all, all credit in the all world too for to Devin that. McGinley. We have the official score in, and Aaron Varau is about to give us the results. All right, ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for these two warriors right here, man. Thank you very much. Based on the unanimous decision, Judge Mason scores about 29-27. Judge Abietta scores about 30-26. Judge Johnson scores about 30-26. For your winner, by unanimous decision, and fighting out of the red corner, And Devin McGinley picks up the unanimous decision win there. Josh, I do, uh, I do have to believe that the judges did get that one right. And naturally, with you, you saw that there was the discrepancy across the board with not a 30-27 in each yeah. one. We did see that eight-point round on one of the cards. That is because in most striking martial arts, folks who are mainly familiar with MMA, it is usually always going to be that 10-8 whenever there's a, a drop. Down, yeah, you get a knockdown in a stand-up in a stand-up stand-up combat sport, it's going to almost automatically be 10-8. Amazing performance, sir. We can't wait to have you back. Is there something you would like to thank? Yeah, absolutely. All the people in the family over at Power Training tonight. My girlfriend, I know she was probably not going to train that every day, but just my whole family and have to thank you, baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Mr. Tennant, begin. Congratulations to Devin McGinley there, picking up the big win. That is actually, that is uh, that is his first win as well. His first win. So that, that's trainer. awesome to see that uh, that he comes in and he finds some success, you know, that you have to give the credit also to someone who, it takes a lot of guts and courage to go out there to make this walk to put yourself in the cage. And there's not a lot of people who are willing to go back out there after you take the lesson in the first yeah. time. Yeah. So credit to Mr. McGinley for sticking it through, and he came out, and he got the victory tonight, Josh. That's all that matters. Yeah, it takes a lot to step in there, especially coming after coming off a loss to get the guts to come back in and put on a performance like he did. It was an amazing job. All right, ladies 